Over six months ago, we were greeted to the beautiful Alpine A521 in an online launch. Almost immediately after the launch, it was announced that our all-time favourite torpedo, Dan Kvyat, would join Alpine as its testing and reserve driver for 2021, quietly replacing fellow countryman Sergei Sorotkin, who had held the role from 2019 to 2020 and previously drove for Williams in 2018. So, ahead of Sorokin's home race, the Russian Grand Prix, I thought let's take a walk through time and look at Sorokin's early career, time in F1 and what he did after the 2018 season, besides being a Renault reserve. You are watching F1 Lost Stars, Sergei Sorokin. Sergei Oligovich Sorokin was born on the 27th of August 1995 in Moscow, Russia. Like most drivers, Sorokin started out his career in karts, making his debut in 2008 in the KF3 category. That year, he participated in several series across the globe, with the season highlight being victory in the KF3 Gothenburg Grand Prix. In 2009, he remained in KF3 once more, with the highlight being third in the CIK KF3 Viking Cup, open to drivers from Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Russia. Before 2010, Sorokin moved up to the KF2 class, running a European-based campaign, with the highlight being fourth in the KF2 Viking Cup. In the later part of the season, Sorokin also made his car racing debut with a half-season campaign in Formula Above with Jensen Motorsport. Sorokin finished in 18 with 12 points and a best finish of 8, which really was a fairly decent result for a driver who entered the series midway for his first year of car racing. 2011 would mark Sorokin's second season in cars and he would return to Formula Above. For 2011, Formula Above has split into two series with an Italian series and a European series. Sorokin would participate in both in what was a very successful season, finishing first in the European series and second in the Italian series. For the first half of the season, Sorokin drove for Jensen Motorsport before moving over to the Euronova Racing by Fortec team prior to the Spa round. After success in Formula Abar for 2011, Sorokin embarked on a full season campaign across two categories, AutoGP and Italian Formula 3 for 2012. He remained with Euronova for both categories, finishing 3rd in AutoGP and 5th in the Italian Formula 3 European Series and 6th in the Italian Series. On paper, that would look like good if not decent results, but once you saw the size of the grids and the names he was competing against, you started to question the value of the results. But anyway, he would also participate in the Moscow Raceway round of the Formula Renault 3.5 Series, driving for BVM Target Racing, and the weekend was a poor one. For both races, Sorokin qualified the penultimate role and finished last in the first race before retiring in the second. That said, to his credit, he did outperform his teammate Nikolai Matsenko. For 2013, Sorokin elected to focus solely on Formula Renault 3.5, embarking on a full season campaign with ISR Racing. He showed flashes of speed but was generally inconsistent and he won up 9 in the standings with 61 points. Not exactly a brilliant performance though he beat his teammate Christopher Zanella and finished second in the rookie standings, losing out to Stoffel Van Dorn, who finished second overall with 214 points. In July 2013, Sorokin also joined Sauber in the developmental role with the aim of a 2014 race seat after the team picked up three Russian investors. However, for 2014, the F1 race seat would not materialize and he remained in Formula Renault 3.5, switching over to Fortec who led Van Dorn to second the previous season. That said, Sorokin would remain with Sauber, making his FP1 debut in Russia while gaining backing from SMP Racing. Unfortunately for Sorokin, the same problems that blighted him in 2013 came back to haunt him again. He wound up ending the season in 5th with 132 points, finishing behind series champion Carlos Sainz Jr. and rookies Pierre Gasly, Roberto Murphy and Oliver Rowland. For 2015, Sorokin moved to the GP2 series, signing with Rapex, a defunct team best remembered for taking this guy to his GP2 title in 2010 and winning the team championship that season. At first glance, you'd probably be thinking, so, it's a front-running team. Except, it wasn't. After taking both titles in 2010, the team fell back and had effectively become rooted to the back of the grid. With this in mind, you probably expect to see Sorokin sitting at the bottom of the standings. So, where did he finish? Was it 30th? 20th? Well, he wasn't even 10th. He was 3rd with 139 points. As a rookie in a backmarker car. 
Sure, he was nowhere near first place Vandor's tally of 341.5 points, but neither was second place Rossi, who had 181.5 points. And at this point, you could say a star was born. For 2016, he would move from Rapex to ART Grand Prix, replacing Van Dorn. With his 2015 performances, one could be forgiven for thinking that he would absolutely dominate the championship in a front-running team, except it wasn't the case at all. Sorokin's lack of consistency came back to plague him again in 2016. Combined with reliability issues, he finished third with 159 points just beating out Raffaele Marcello to third on a tiebreaker. Marcello had won zero races to Sorokin's two. That year, Sorokin also joined the reborn Renault squad as a development driver, receiving two FP1 runs in Russia and Brazil. 2017 would see Sorokin stay mostly on the sidelines, though he made two race appearances, participating in the 24 Hours of Le Mans with SMP Racing and in the Azerbaijan F2 round with ART Grand Prix, subbing for Alex Albon. Sorokin also remained with Renault with an expanded FP1 program with four appearances in Russia, Spain, Austria and Malaysia. At the end of the season, Sorokin competed in a shootout against Robert Kubica and Williams during the Abu Dhabi postseason test, ultimately beating Kubica to the seat, a decision that was highly controversial to put it lightly. Anyway, 2018 came about and by the end of pre-season testing, it was clear that FW41 was basically a disaster on wheels. Williams finished testing at the bottom of the timesheets and needless to say, it was going to be a tough season ahead. For his debut Grand Prix in Australia, Sorokin qualified on the final row, which was where the FW41s were typically found for most of the year. Sorokin failed to finish after his breakdown ingested a sandwich bag leading to his retirement. In the next two races in Bahrain and China, Sorokin will outqualify his stroll. However, Stroll would finish ahead of Sorokin in both races, which pretty much set the tone for the season as more often than not, Sorokin would be faster than Stroll in qualifying but fall behind in the races. For Sorokin, it would generally be a quiet season with few highlights due to the sheer lack of pace of the FW41, with him typically being found at the back of the field. That's it, there were several standout weekends for the Russian. In Azerbaijan, Sorokin reached Q2 for the first time and qualified 12th. However, he would take himself out of the race in a lap 1 incident. In Monaco, he crushed Stroll by a whopping 6 tenths of a second in Q1 and then qualified 13th for the race. Up to that point, the FW41 had mostly been rubbish, being off the pace at nearly every track, giving Sorokin few opportunities to score points. However, at Monaco, it looked as if Sorokin had a realistic chance at scoring his first points. Alas, it was not to be. By no fault of his own, his race was already ruined before it had even started. Team Mechanics failed to fix a wheel assembly problem prior to the 3 minute board leading to an automatic stop goal penalty. As a result, Sorokin finished second last only ahead of Stroll. And the same thing would happen in Germany where Sorokin equaled his best qualifying finish to secure 12th on the grid. This time, he retired with an engine oil leak preventing him from reaching the points on a weekend where the FW41 appeared to be much more competitive than usual. By the summer break, the statistics look like this. Sorokin beat Stroll in the qualifying sessions 7-5 but lost out to the, but lost out in the races 4-7. All in all, it was a relatively fine first half of the season for Sorokin. After several misses, points finally came in Italy. Sorokin managed to equal his best qualifying to start 12 and finish 11 on the road, just outside the points. However, due to the disqualification of Roman Grosjean, he was promoted to 10, scoring his one and only point in Formula 1. After the Italian Grand Prix came the Singapore Grand Prix, which would arguably be Sorokin's best race. Both Williams cars had a woeful qualifying, with both drivers qualifying over a second behind the last place non Williams car and 5 seconds slower than Lewis Hamilton's pole time, with Sorokin qualifying ahead of Stroll. In the lap 1 chaos that saw Sergio Perez show his teammate Esteban Ocon into the wall, Sorokin collected a piece of Ocon's rim in his front wing, triggering an early pit stop. At first glance, it doesn't sound good at all, but the incident would serve as the catalyst for one of the biggest moments in Sorokin's F1 career. Between lap 29 to 33, Sorokin was locked in an intense battle with Perez over P13. Despite being on fresher ultra soft tyres in a faster car, Perez repeatedly struggled to overtake the Russian 
who was on older sauce until lap 33. And almost immediately after overtaking the Russian, Perez plowed into Sorokin. The ensuing damage compromised Sorokin's race, which wasn't helped by a penalty for forcing Brandon Hartley off track later that night. As a result of all the incidents and penalties, Sorokin finished last. The rest of the season would be quiet and uneventful for Sorokin until Brazil, where he made Q2 to the surprise of Williams who had not prepared his tyres. Ahead of the season finale in Abu Dhabi, Williams announced that Robert Kubica will replace Sorokin for 2019. Sorokin's backers, SP Racing, claim it chose to end its partnership with Williams due to poor performance and insufficient development. For Sorokin's F1 Swan Song, he outqualified Stroll once again to start 19 but fell behind in the race to finish last. And with that, Sorokin's full time F1 career was effectively over. By the end of the season, the head to head statistics between Stroll and Sorokin looked like this. Sorokin led in qualifying once again with 13 to 8, but lost out in races 9 to 11. This honestly wasn't bad, but it could be better as Sorokin was behind Stroll on average by one position in the races. And in qualifying, the pair weren't that far apart either, though it should be said that the result could have been skewed by the car, which was not performing to the level it should have been. For 2019, he returned to Renault as reserve driver and held the same role at McLaren. Combining this with his commitment at SP Racing in the WEC. 2020 saw him stay on at Renault, combining his program at Enstone with a drive in the GT World Challenge Europe Endurance Cup. For 2021, Shrokin has not driven in any races. Unfortunately, with the announcement of Dan Kivia in his role at Alpine for 2021, any hopes of an F1 return seem slim. To close off this video, I personally felt that Shrokin deserved another year in F1 and in a much better car. The disappointment that was the FW41 clearly inhibited Sorokin from demonstrating his true ability which we got to see flashes of throughout the year and it's ultimately a pity that his career just lasted a single season. I wouldn't call Sorokin a lost world champion but he would have been a solid midfield driver. So now that we're at the end of the video, thank you for watching, do drop me a like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Instagram and do share your thoughts on Sorokin and this video in the comments section. Do stay safe and I'll see you next time.